Hey YouTube, SciGuy29 coming at you again today. Uh, been a little while since I made a video, a true video. Uh, maybe if you saw my last one, you might know why I haven't made one the rest of the week. Uh, good news is the tree is picked up, cleaned up for the most part, and I always have to wait for people to come around and pick it up off the curb. Um, really excited today uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, 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 however you want that. Um, I found unopened packs in my county. Uh, it's the first time I've seen unopened packs uh, in the county that I live in probably in two years. We had a, a store that shut down a couple years ago. It was called Shopco that carried cards. It was the only place I could get cards. Uh, with the terrible storm we had on Monday, had to go get gas uh, in a neighboring town, which is about nine miles away. Went in when I paid two, not one, but two packs of series one 2020 tops uh, if I get anything good I'll share that with you at another time second thing uh, I kind of want to bring up and talk about is with the news of uh, officially not having a national this year um, you know it kind of changed the landscape of people's plans certainly not mine uh, I wasn't gonna be able to get to Atlantic City no matter when they had it I know there's a lot of people on the East Coast ticked off upset about it and I get it uh, having a, a show of that size and magnitude and uh, in your backyard, I get wanting to have it, um, but but with what's going on, I can also understand the promoters who are on now not going to do it. Uh, it's kind of <laughs> see the door open in the background, dogs down here wandering around, wondering what's going on. Um, so with that, uh, it just made me start thinking. You know, really, there's been three uh, attempts at large shows virtually this year. All three great things about them. A couple of them, things that are not so great about it, I didn't find great about them. Uh, and just wanted to share my thoughts and hopefully get some dialogue going uh, with some other people about that. Because I think it's truly going to become a bigger part of the hobby, at least in the foreseeable future, uh, as we go through these next 6 to 12 months. So, you know, obviously the first one was the, the uh, uh, Sports Card Expo the, that they have in Toronto every year. Uh, back, with, I think it was the 19th and 20th of June, uh, did not have nearly as much time uh, to kind of dive into that as I would have liked. I did like, uh, for those that weren't, didn't kind of check that out, uh, it was powered by eBay, uh, took the place of the typical uh, sports card expo in Toronto. Uh, usually, you know, for hockey fans, you know what that is. Um, but just kind of took the place of, of all that for them. Um, they had live guests. They had uh, kind of like live Zooms you could get in on if you had certain passes. Uh, so it kind of made it more like a VIP-friendly type of thing. Um, the one thing that I really did like about that uh, was being able to go in. It was being powered by eBay. They had eBay stores. You could kind of go into the dealers, get directly to them. So you kind of sort out what you were looking for. Uh, but the cool thing was a lot of the dealers were actually live. And you could go in and talk, haggle a little bit. Uh, I tried to get a couple of uh, 1950s Parkhurst cards that didn't get up, end up making a deal. Uh, but it was fun to, just to talk cards with somebody live, so to speak, and, and kind of do that. Another cool thing is they had uh, a hockey podcast that I listened to called Puck Junk. Uh, Sal Berry was live. And uh, he, just a minute here. Let's see if I can appease the dog a little bit. And... Uh, could just converse with those people. It was really nice. Uh, the selling was hard because it was still like buying on eBay, but at least you had the opportunity to talk to somebody about it that actually could tell you and, and possibly even show you the cards. So second, uh, you know, the virtual sports card con, uh, sports card investor kind of powered that one through. Um, once again, some really good things. Uh, the biggest thing was, uh, in, I was introduced to some people I didn't know about or, or, or groups that I hadn't heard of. Uh, did not spend as much time as it was going on the same time as the last group I'll talk about. But they uh, just didn't fit for me. Uh, a couple of the live sales, uh, the people were some, the first couple, the couple that I saw, I can't speak for everybody, uh, were somewhat unprepared. And, and it was just crazy. You couldn't get onto the site. You couldn't lack it, log in. Couldn't get stuff. Couldn't get bids in. You know, I'll take that, whatever the case might be. Just made it really difficult. Uh, sites crashed. Um, you know, obviously the demand was much greater than they anticipated, uh, and that was the downfall for that. Uh, lots of good information. Uh, 
like I said, people I didn't know, StockX, didn't know a lot about that. Got to sit and listen on that, ask a couple questions. Um, but just seemed rushed and not, uh, execution was lacking. Great ideas. Uh, so, you know, take that for what you want. The last one was Hobby Palooza, uh, put on by the Bench Clear guys, uh, which was a great event in my book. Uh, number one, a lot of people I was familiar with, kind of the YouTube group that I follow anyway, uh, made that a little more understandable for me, relatable, I guess. Um, you know, the giveaways were incredible. Uh, just being able to have that live interaction again, even though it wasn't my not maybe face to face, was great. But um, you know, that went a long way to fill in that national void, that show void, uh, that collector connection void uh, that so many had. Last point is the future. What what is that going to truly hold? I don't know. Um, I know the nearest show that I can find to me, uh, and by nearest I mean it's two hours. Um, doesn't seem like much, and even now, uh, with the storm that rolled through, uh, intensified in eastern Iowa, and I know the area where that show is usually held got whacked. I mean, it looks like a war zone over there. Cedar Rapids, uh, Marion's Iowa City area just got clobbered. As bad as it was where I live, uh, multiply it. Plus, they still don't have power. And the storm hit Monday early afternoon for them, and most places still don't have power. Somebody estimated 2% of their county had power. And that's one of the three or four largest counties in the state of Iowa. So that's kind of a big deal. So I don't know if the, the area they usually have it, the, the location was safe or not. I have no idea, uh, at least the people's worries right now. But two hours is the closest one I know of, and that's the second weekend of September. Um, is this going to be the future or a possible future, especially for those people that live uh, in areas like I do that just don't have the connection to shows and retail areas you know, LCSs and, and the like to get that done. Uh, you know, it'd be so much nicer to make that connection uh, kind of face-to-face -face and, and have an avenue to go through um, to make those things happen. So I'd love to hear your comments, ideas, suggestions, thoughts on the three virtual events uh, that were kind of held and uh, kind of what your future thoughts are. What do you, what do you see going forward? So um, I'd love you to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Love to have some dialogue on this. Uh, Till next time, stay safe. Collect what you love, love what you collect. Later.